in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And presumably when he created the heavens, he created the rest of the universe, because what we consider to be, you know, heaven, the sky, is really just, you know, what we can make out of the rest of, you know, the universe, outer space. And presumably when he created these, you know, about 6,000... 6,500 years ago, maybe. Don't listen to all the countless pieces of evidence against it, you know, the fossil record and all that. He presumably also created the dinosaurs, because we do have quite a lot of evidence that they existed. Anyway, he created the Earth by, you know, putting water where there was only sand and, you know, obviously you couldn't grow something without water. Either that or he put some ground in, down where there was only water. I'm not entirely sure because the first two stories at the very beginning of the Bible actually contradict each other on this point. I'm actually quite amazed that any Christian opens his Bible, reads that first little bit, first couple of pages maybe, and can't see that, you know, all of this stuff can't be completely true because the first two stories contradict each other 100%. They couldn't both have happened. Unless he created the Earth, you know, in two separate stages or something. Maybe he just dumped a lot of sand and then realized, oh, wait, we need water also, and then he did the other part. I don't know. Anyway, first we lived without sin. Apparently because we didn't know what sin was, so we couldn't do it, and that was why we deserved to be in paradise. Anyway, we then sinned because someone got the munchies, and... Now we are here on Earth, and snakes don't have arms. Yeah. Of course, God did feel a little bad about just, you know, throwing out billions of people from an eternal life in paradise just because two people crossed the line, and that's why he put a lot of disease germs, and predators on Earth around us so that at first we really didn't live very long. You see, he just, he missed us so bad. He just wanted to bring us right back up in heaven, and that's why early on death was celebrated and certainly wasn't, you know, the ultimate punishment for crimes or sins against him. Wait. Anyway, this went on for quite a while until technology, you know, helped out with that whole thing. You know, we got antiviruses, we got, you know, cures, vaccines, hygiene, a lot of things that drastically prolonged our existence here. I don't know, maybe God doesn't miss us quite as much anymore. I mean, you'd think that if he wanted us to have long, healthy lives, you know, we'd come out of the womb with a bar of soap in one hand and a jar of vaccinations in the other. Syringe already in arm, I don't know. Or a syringe in the jar, whatever. Since he created everything, Logically, he created all the bad things, also. I recently watched a Coughlin video where, where a preacher was quite perturbed that his preaching, he was a missionary, was stopped just because a woman had just died. Yes. And... He was mad at the devil.
for her dying. Wait, wait. Does the devil kill you now? Does God... I mean, are, are they having, like, a big arm wrestling match about who gets to kill the next person? You know? Is it decided through matches of rock, paper, scissors? Is it like a first come, first serve kind of thing? Maybe the devil only kills on Sundays, because after, you know, God spent six days creating the heavens and the earth, because apparently being, you know, omnipotent doesn't mean that you can just snap things into existence. No, it still takes a good solid week. So he rested on the seventh day, because, you know, even God needs a day off, you know. I don't know if he continues to take a day off every week. Do a lot of natural disasters occur on Sundays? Maybe he just switches which day of the week he's taking off, and that helps explain why really bad things happen. Anyway, this preacher was apparently saying that this woman died because of the devil. Yeah, I don't quite think all the Christians quite agree on if God created everything, including the bad, or, you know, if the devil then came. If God loves us and, you know, wants us to live long, healthy lives, why doesn't he eradicate disease? I mean, if the devil made it, surely God can unmake it, right? I've already raised the point in one of these videos that surely God can, you know, undo what the devil does. I mean, why would he give more, too much power to one of his subjects, you know, so much so that they could do something that he couldn't erase. Anyway, if God did create everything, surely he created homosexuals, right? There is the fact that in nature there is homosexuality, and we are, in fact, like it or not, a part of nature. We can fool ourselves by, you know, building houses and messing around with nature. But at the end of the day, we are part of it. We are quite dependent on it. And for homosexuality to show up in human beings, it's just as logical as, you know, it happens in nature, too. And I want to know, you Christians, or religious people in general, who hate homosexuals, is it worse for a homosexual to be doing, who is doing good? Is that worse or better than a religious person, perhaps even someone who follows the same faith as you, to destroy something, to hurt someone, to kill someone, perhaps even, in the name of their religion. You know, maybe even mandated by their religion. Maybe it's a mus Muslim apostate. I, I would like to know that. Religious people don't have some kind of monopoly on doing good. And in fact, many religious people do very bad because they're quite sure that they're right. And that can lead to really bad things when people are certain that they're right. Now, about Monopoly, it's never a good thing when there's only one option offered. Perhaps you're a capitalist, or at least know how capitalism works. You probably have realized that capitalism 
is better when there are several organizations offering more or less the same thing because it means they can compete with one another. If not, you know, we get something like Microsoft who release crap sometimes. And nobody challenges them. I mean, people complain, of course, but when you don't have any competition, it's really easy for you to just make as little effort as you can. And when a lot of people in the same area are just following the same religion, where is that competition? How are you ensuring that it's the best thing? Americans are very proud of capitalism, many that I've met anyway. And I just have to wonder why you do not apply that to your morality. I mean, if you demand that the orange juice you buy for your children's breakfast be the best and the cheapest and the most efficient that there could be in your particular area, at least, then how come the ideas that are to govern their sense of right and wrong, to decide their path in life through their choices, how come that is not placed under the same scrutiny? If you think you have a good answer, I would really love to hear it. That's it for this one.